Hey everybody, my name is Brandon Inglesby, and at the time of this recording, it is January 9th, 2023, so I hope you guys are all having a fantastic start to your year so far, and I wanted to go over, I know it's been a while since my last uh, flipping post, um, I told you all that I would come back with a update of how that went, when it sold, what I sold it for, what kind of profit I made, all the numbers involved with that transaction. And I'm definitely excited to share it with you, but I have been super busy with more flips, um, which part of the thing is, am I gonna continue flipping? So there's kind of the answer there. Um, but I do wanna talk about this first experience as a whole, really break it down, share some of my pros, cons of flipping, things I would do again, things I wouldn't do again, and hopefully you guys, you know, for people out there that are looking to get into this flipping investment space, uh, hopefully you can learn from some of the mistakes that I made and hopefully you can take away from some of the things that I did right as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So I will go ahead and tell you that throughout, I might be looking down a little bit. I do have some notes here, some numbers, things like that. The first thing I wanna talk about is the overall experience of my first flip. So basically I will say that it was an absolute blast. It was pretty much everything that I was hoping for as far as the fun aspect of what it is that I experienced. Um, it is not necessarily like you see on HGTV. It's not you know that glamorous. You're walking into you know crack houses or hoarder houses, and you know this one was more you know you literally had to watch where you're walking for you know needles or something crazy. Um, so that's not great, but, you know, being able to take something that is that distressed and, you know, dilapidated and turn it into the nicest house on the street and get a record setting price for that street, um, felt really good, you know, really took something that was really bad, made it absolutely beautiful. Um, and the buyer was incredibly happy as well. I will say overall, it is a little bit stressful, um, as a business owner, I've you know, I've been used to that, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me, but you know, that might sway some of you away from the flipping aspect. Dealing with the contractors and the city, you know, trying to coordinate, you know, the different permitting and things like that um, can definitely be a little stressful. But I always try to look at everything, you know, in kind of a cliche way is, you know, the juice worth the squeeze. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, in this line of business, yeah, I, I would say that it's worth it and it's worth a little bit of stress and headache and things like that. Um, and overall, the enjoyment of it was there for me as well. So next, I wanna go over a couple pros and cons. I'm gonna start with the pros. Um, it's definitely fun. You can make great money, you know, at flipping houses. Um, just by doing at least one, you build some valuable real estate investment experience, uh, which can come in a lot of handy down the road. Even if you don't do something again right away, just having that ability of knowing that you can take an amount of money and put it into a distressed asset and turn it into more than what you put in and do that on a repeatable basis is something that, you know, you could find yourself without a job <laughs> and then you'll be able to go out there and pitch somebody and use other people's money, which is something that I'll probably talk about in a video here soon is leveraging other people's money as well as your own um, to go out there and, and make this thing happen. So it's definitely a great experience to have. And then to top it all off, you know, ultimately, right, one good thing about doing this is that you're making these neighborhoods nicer. And when I say making them nicer, I'm not saying, you know, turning everything into the Ritz, but taking something that is literally not even habitable and turning it into a nice house for a family to live in. Um, that's definitely a big deal. And overall it makes the community nicer, which is always a good thing. Cons of flipping houses, as mentioned, uh, definitely can be stressful. So that's gonna be one negative. You have to manage a lot of different aspects of the project. Obviously you have your GC, but you have to be on top of you know your GC um, in order to make sure that things are getting done. Like you have to know what's going on. You can't just fully place it in the hands of somebody else and keep your fingers crossed. Cause then otherwise, nothing's probably gonna get done ultimately. And of course, just like with any investment, there is gonna be the risk of losing money and that can freak some people out, but it takes money to make money and scared money don't make money. So a couple little sayings there <laughs> that you've probably heard 150 times, but it is true. Um, but the financial rewards of flipping is incredible. And if you do it right, you know, worst case, you might lose a small amount. 
if you don't do anything too crazy, it's not going to be absolutely, you know, disastrous, um, like some particular investments. And another thing that I do love about it is that unlike the stock market, you kind of have control over the outcome. Like you, you control what you buy the property for. You control how much you put into it as far as renovations go. Yeah, there can be some things that come up, but as long as you don't over improve for that area, you should be okay. Part of this being my first flip, I was ignorant about the process and some of the investor contractor relationship aspects and kind of, I didn't know what to hold them accountable to, how to get like the agreements drawn up and make sure that there's a good scope of work beforehand and things like that. And basically, you know, to kind of explain the contractor woes that I dealt with is I'll preface it by saying that the company that I used, which I'm not going to name because I don't think he was like out to get me. It was just a big mis miscommunication more or less on, on both sides. Um, and he took on a job that I don't think he was ready to take on yet. But basically, they'd done a lot of work for me and my family and our personal homes and things like that, doing uh, kitchens and baths, always did a really great job. He got his GC license and he knew I was looking to get into flipping homes. So he said, hey, like I want to crack at your first one. Um, well, he definitely just didn't have the large project management experience, unfortunately. Um, and it led to things taking a really long time. Um, our deal was basically that I was covering labor. Well, if you cover the labor, but they're all running around not knowing what to work on, um, next thing you know, three, four weeks in, I'm paying for all this labor and nothing's really getting done um, in a timely manner. So things that took, you know, this whole project really probably should have taken, you know, six weeks, maybe eight, ended up taking like more like four, um, which I'll break down the timeline here in just a bit. Um, with him being a new GC, he didn't have um, electricians, he didn't have plumbers, he didn't have roofers. So not only am I paying him to be a GC, but then I got to go out and basically be a GC by going out and getting these different, you know, vendors to come out and do this project. Um, so I had to spend my time doing that, which when I'm paying somebody to do something, I don't want to then have to take my own time when I could be in my other business, the real estate business selling houses, making money, and I'm running around trying to find a guy to put in a light switch. <laughs> I mean, it was a little more than that, but you get my point. And it, it was a very weird structured deal. Like I said, I was paying that labor um, and he was collecting a, like a weekly uh, general contractor management fee, which that doesn't really make sense to me either. Um, I like it when it's, hey, this is how much it's going to cost. You know, it's an estimate. I get it. But this is an estimate. This is all in. And it's either going to include materials or not include materials. And that's it. There's not, hey, man, like I need to hit you up for this. I need to hit you up for this. Like there also needs to be a payment schedule. And this is something if you guys are ever doing your first one, like you want to know, hey, I'm going to be given, I don't know, 15% up front. 10, 15, 20%, whatever it is up front, and then this many percentage at this point in the project, and then this, uh, the final amount at, you know, the tail end, you know? And you wanna have a clear outline of when you're gonna spend money, how much you're gonna spend. It'll give you a really good idea so you can budget, not some makeshift pay-as-you-go type weird stuff that, that he was trying to do with me, but, you know, I just think that was a, lack of experience deal. I know I wasn't getting screwed because I did see the materials and the cost of that, et cetera, and how much he was paying in labor. But, you know, ultimately the lack of management and, you know, the crew kind of doing whatever, them not being there multiple days in a row, you know, things like that. When I finally sat down and like crunched all the numbers, ultimately going with the wrong contractor to start costed, you know, probably ended up costing me in the ballpark of $30,000 off of my profit that would have been in my pocket. Um, so it is what it is, you know, you live and you learn. But I did have to finally let that contractor go. And I kind of just had to tell him that, 
you know, I appreciate the work he's done so far, but you know, this project seems a little too big. So I had to get someone else in there to go in behind them, fix some of the mistakes that they made and go ahead and wrap up the project. Because every time I turned around, they kept saying it'd be another two weeks, it'd be another two weeks, it'd be another two weeks. Well, you know, when you have a hard money loan on a property, you can't just wait around forever because, you know, times money times two, because <laughs> just holding that house is costing you, you know, every single day there's a, you know, interest payment, whether it's 50 bucks a day or whatever, but it adds up. The other holding costs add up, you know, you have to carry insurance on the property. Um, so anyways, I got this other crew in and they wrapped it up roughly a week. So I definitely made the right call being able to pull the trigger there. Um, that's a big lesson is that you can't be afraid to, you know, let one of your vendors go. Um, whether you're friends with them or not, you just, you got to do it. It's not worth you losing a ton of money to save someone some hurt feelings. And honestly, he appreciated me for letting him go. He admitted that it was too big of a project. Why he didn't do that earlier? I don't know. But you know, it's here nor there, no bad feelings in, in that direction. Um, but yeah, you just gotta be willing to let someone go if it makes sense. And a lot of times you're doing them a favor cause they can get back to doing what, you know, what they need to do. So uh, with that being said, I do wanna go ahead and go over the numbers now. I am a little bit disappointed, but I'm also not gonna complain because, you know, no one's perfect, especially on their first time doing something. So my official purchase price of that property was $150,000. I did cover uh, the seller closing cost. Um, so that brought me to $151,573 on the purchase. Uh, total lender fees for the project uh, were about 7,000. Insurance was a few thousand dollars, 3,000. Um, Interest payments on the property was 3,600. I paid the first contractor $65,000. Um, I paid the roofer $12,000. Um, electric was 6,250. AC, uh, $5,000. Some truss work was uh, about 3,500. Then, then you got to take into account these are the, some of the small things that people don't. Uh, you know, remember that they paid for, but it's important. Um, survey and appraisal, thousand, utilities, a thousand, 2,500 for appliances, 600 bucks for fans, uh, 1350 for the garage door, um, 850 bucks for the water heater. Um, I put in miscellaneous of 1500 um, for some little stuff and, um, you know, having the other contractor come in and, and wrap some things up was a uh, 3000. So with all those numbers, I know it was a lot of different numbers. Um, the total was $268,585. Now I started this project, I closed on it on June 8th for the purchase, June 8th, 2022. And I sold it the closing date was 10 22 so not the longest project, definitely not the shortest. Like I said, could have been cut down a lot more, but with the big whoops with the first contractor, that cost me a bucket of money, uh, still made about $19,000 in profit. So fairly happy about that, uh, considering, like I said, you know, first one. <clears throat> I do have some ones going on over in St. Pete that I'm really looking forward to wrapping up and uh, seeing what kind of profit those turnover should be significantly better than that. Um, now, with these numbers being said, I've had a lot of people ask me if this is something that I wanna do long-term. Uh, the answer is absolutely. Uh, the money's absolutely phenomenal if you do it right. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and for me, it's good stress, keeps me busy, so. So that's basically gonna wrap this video up. If you have any questions about house flipping, um, regular long-term buy and holds, anything like that, different markets in Florida, you know, definitely feel free to reach out at any time. All my contact information is gonna be down below in the description, um, as well as my website. If you just wanna look at some properties, see if you can find some on-market properties that you might wanna take a look at. 
Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that bell notification as well really helps me out. And of course, if you have any questions, if you don't want to reach out directly, you know, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I try to answer all of them. Um, but that's pretty much it for this. Uh, I'm going to be getting some more flip content out to you guys in the near future. Have a project wrapping up now and I've got the two in St. Pete uh, construction starting. So those are going to be really exciting and I am going to try to drop them all at once, not so spaced out. So I am looking forward to doing that and I'll see you guys in the next one.